Hi and welcome back to part 5 of the DevSpace tutorial series. In this video, we will dive deeper into the features that DevSpace provides in development mode. That is everything that we define under the Dev section. Now, once you've deployed a service to your local Kubernetes cluster, there are a multitude of ways to connect it with your local machine or various Dev tools, like port forwards, remote terminals, proxy commands, or connecting your IDEs and debuggers. So in this video, we will focus on connecting to your Dev container. In our example, we have two deployments, backend and payment, and we deploy them via our old friend, the components chart, using the Ubuntu and the Nginx images respectively. For the payment deployment, we additionally add a label service and pass in the value payment. First, we need to select the appropriate container to connect to. We can do this by using either the image selector or the label selector. In this example, we are using the image selector to find the backend pod and the label selector to find the payment pod. If you are working with a service that needs to speak to or be spoken to by other services, you can use the ports section to expose the pod's ports. This is equivalent to kubectl port forward, except that DevSpace is also able to reverse port forward traffic from the container into localhost. To see what's going on inside the development container, you have one of three options. Starting a new terminal session, attaching to a running process, or streaming the logs. In this example, we are attaching to an existing process in the backend container. And usually this would be the entry point. This will give us a terminal as soon as the container is ready. Under the hood, this is equivalent to kubectl attach. For the payments deployment, we are only interested in streaming the logs out to us, and we only want to see the last 100 lines at any given time. For a more detailed explanation on these and other terminal options, please visit our docs. To reiterate, the goal of DevSpace is really to simplify the developer workflow in Kubernetes and make it so that you can work on your development environment from your local machine and completely forget that it's actually running in a container on Kubernetes. To that end, you can define commands that you want to proxy from your local machine into the container, like in this example where we're proxying DevSpace, kubectl, git, and others. Please be very careful here because this might pose a security risk. If you, for example, proxy bash OS H, that would mean that everyone with access to this dev container can also execute scripts on your local machine. So here I'm inside a terminal session that I've attached to the entry point and I am executing kubectl get pods. And as you can see, the result is actually the containers or the pods that are running on my local machine. Another feature that can come in very handy is to connect to your IDE. Most modern IDEs like IntelliJ or VS Code allow connections to remote SSH servers. And that will allow you to use all the features like, for example, SCP. To inject an SSH server into your development pod, you have to enable it first. DevSpace will take care of all the boilerplate stuff like adding an entry to your SSH config or creating the appropriate key pair. You can then connect to the container with SSH devconfig name dot devspace name dot devspace. I want to show you something really cool. Here's a way that you can deploy an application, start an SSH server, open VS Code and have that connect to your SSH server automatically with just one command. For this to work, we need to make sure that DevSpace and the Git credentials are proxied into the dev container, SSH is enabled, and we have set a local host name. Then we create a pipeline that will start dev mode and then start VS Code. And we will pass in the host name of the SSH server as the remote SSH server. There's no code in here, but you can see that VS Code is connected remotely to backend.devspace. Pretty cool, right? If you want to see the full example and play around with it a little bit, you can check it out on GitHub. You can also attach debuggers to a dev container. How exactly you need to set this up depends on the debugger. I didn't mention all the development mode features in here. So if you're curious what else you can connect to your dev containers, please head over to our docs, or you can also join our Slack community on slack.love.sh where you can chat with the maintainers and users about anything you'd like. 
And in the next video, we will further look into modifying your dev container so it is optimized for your development process, featuring one of our most beloved features, hot reloading. I can't wait and see you next time. Bye.